What's up YouTube? My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator. Have you ever wondered about the Appearance Studio and Affinity Designer on iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Okay. So we are working our way through each of these studios along the right hand side in Affinity Designer on iPad and these are very similar to the studios in Affinity Designer on desktop as well. A lot of the same things apply. The interface can just look a little different when you're on iPad and today we're talking about the Appearance Studio. Now this is one of the most recent studios added to Affinity Designer and it was a big deal when it came because this was one of those features that was missing from apps that we might have been familiar with like Adobe Illustrator. So this can seem like a very simple studio when you first look at it, there's not a whole lot going on here. It's not like the Stroke Studio where there's like a ton of things going on, but it can get really complicated really quickly and it involves using other studios and other tools as well in order to layer fills and strokes on top of each other for really unique effects. So this can really be a powerful studio if you learn to use it. Now before we jump in and look at it, let me just say that this studio has not progressed to the level of the appearance panel in Adobe Illustrator yet. There are still some things that don't work quite as well, but it is a step in the right direction in being able to do these things with multiple fills and strokes. And there's some really cool tricks that I'm going to show you today. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at the Appearance Studio. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Designer on the iPad, and I've just put a square out on this artboard so that we can take a look at the Appearance Studio. Go over to the right hand side, five studios down, you're going to find a little rounded square with a dashed line around it. That is the Appearance Studio. And when you open that up, you're going to see a couple things. You're going to see the stroke and the fill. Let me just click on the shape and you'll see that change to the stroke and the fill of the shape. And at first you might be like, well, this just looks like what I can do in the color panel. There's a stroke and a fill and that's what I've got. But what you'll notice are along the top, you actually have two plus icons. One is for a stroke and the other is for the fill. So if we click on the stroke, we're actually going to get a new blank stroke. And you can see that it is now selected. The little circle next to it means that it's selected. And if we go to our color tools here, we can actually change that. So let's go ahead and we'll just change it to purple. And it looks like nothing has really happened. And that's because it is so tiny that we can't see it. So let's go to our stroke studio, which we've learned about before. If you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it here because there is a lot going on in the stroke studio. But we can go ahead and we can make this bigger. You can see it's coming over the top. If you remember from the Stroke Studio video, when we go into Advanced, we get a couple of different options. And the one I'm looking for here is the Align options. So currently the stroke is aligned to the middle. I can align it to the inside or the outside of the shape. You can see when I align it to the outside, we can start to see part of our black stroke again. And the reason is that the black stroke is actually underneath the purple stroke. Let's go back to the Appearance Studio. And that's where you're going to see purple is on top of black. And I can move these around just by tapping and dragging them so that one can be on top of the other. You can see there's the fill is currently on the bottom, but if I drag the fill up above to the top, you can see the black stroke completely disappears because now both the inside and the outside are being covered. You can also add in new fills. So if I add in a fill, I can come here, make sure that it's selected, go to the color, and let's just say we wanna make it yellow. And now you can see it's completely covering it up. And this is where this Appearance Studio is not as useful as the Appearance Panel inside of Adobe Illustrator on the desktop because you can't do much in the way of transforming it. Let's go back to the Appearance Panel. There's not much you can do, but what you can do is change the blend mode. So you can see it says Fill Normal. So if I'm selected on that, then I can come here and tap on the three dot menu and I can change the blend mode. And I'm sure they're going to add in effects and stuff as we go along here with new versions of Affinity Designer. But for right now, this is the only thing you can kind of alter here, and that is the blend mode. So you can see we can change this to different types of things. So you can see once we start blending it, we've got that blue and that yellow. So we're getting different shades of green as they blend together. If we go down to darker color, it's going to just have the blue because it's just going to let the darker color show through. Right, so there's a few different things that you can do with blend modes. But honestly, as far as this goes, Really the strokes are where I find this to be more interesting. Let me just go ahead and set this back to normal. And where the strokes get interesting, you can actually make the strokes bigger or smaller and you can change where they're at. And so that allows you to create kind of a layered effect. So let's go ahead, let's just grab this black stroke and let's change it to, let's say our red color. And now in our appearance, we then have this one and it's a stroke and it is on top of the purple stroke and the reason that we can't see it is that it is actually under the fill. So let's go to our stroke and let's set it to the outside. It's currently set to the inside. Let's go ahead and set it to the outside. And now we can see it. 
And of course, because it is bigger than the purple, we can't see the purple anymore. So let's just keep making it bigger. And let's go back to appearance, drag the purple on top. You can see we now have this layered stroke effect. That can be a really cool way of doing something like that. Let me show you what I've got over here. So here's the Ben designs. We're just layering strokes on top of each other. Now there's some tricky things you have to do to get this to work. There's some workarounds because everything isn't perfect in the appearance panel yet. And if you want to see a whole video on how to make some text like this, just let me know that in the comments below and I can totally show you how I went about doing this. But that just shows how you can get kind of this 80s nostalgic look if that's what you're going for with this type of appearance effect. So now we've seen that you can, you know, change the blend mode, you can add fills and you can add strokes. And you might be wondering, well, why would I want to add fills? It looks like they just have to be on top of each other. Here's where that gets interesting is when you start to work with gradients. So if we're on our yellow fill and we change that to a gradient using the fill tool on the left, and I'll link to a video about the fill tool so you can learn how to use that. And we do this, then we can actually adjust the transparency of each of those stops. So we're selected on that bottom stop. So let's go there and let's just take that opacity all the way down. And what do we get? We start to see that fill come through. And then if we go to our blue fill, we can make that a gradient. So maybe we want this one to be purple and that one to still be blue. And then if we come here and we add another fill, we make that a gradient. We need to add in transparency, of course. So we go back to our color and we take down our opacity here and we make this one green. You can start to see how we can get a lot of different effects going on. If you took this to an extreme with a lot of different fills and gradients and then different stops of transparency, you could really start to get something that resembles a mesh gradient. And if you remember, when we've gone through the tools before, we've talked about how there isn't a mesh gradient in Affinity Designer or a freeform gradient. So you can kind of start to approximate that here. And somebody mentioned that in the comments on a video a few weeks back, and I hadn't ever noticed that before, but it's a pretty cool effect that you can get. It will take a lot of time. It's not like it's really a replacement for a tool that actually does this, but it is pretty cool. Now you pretty much know everything there is to know about the about the Appearance Studio and Affinity Designer on iPad. The only thing you might want to know here is you can delete. So if I make sure I'm tapped on that, I can delete that one and you can also hide. So just like in the layers panel we were talking about last time, you can hide these just by turning these on and off. The last thing that I wanted to mention here was just that each stroke can of course do everything that a normal stroke can do. And so if you come to red and you wanted to make that dashed, you can totally go into your stroke studio and you can go ahead and you can make that dashed and you can affect each of the parameters just like you normally would, which of course you can use to create really interesting effects. And if you know something about the appearance studio that I didn't talk about, go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know that as well. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out the playlist of all of my videos on every tool and studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad. If you have questions, please let me know those in the comments below or if you have suggestions for future videos. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.